Hi, everyone. Hey, how you doing? We are here to discuss a VRD. We're going to talk about the St. Louis St. Lotus Presents, and we're discussing it on opening day, which is why uh, we're celebrating for the Cardinals. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, and we're going to be talking with Stephen Hagen about uh, your deck, hearing about kind of how this Teferi deck ended up coming together, and uh, how the draft went overall. Um, so yeah, I guess like, starting with that, this deck uh, ended up doing pretty well. Five and two. Yeah, yeah right? I was tied for first. We had a three-way tie for first. Exactly. Uh, so I I lost my opening game, or I won my opening game against Dan and then lost against you. Uh, and then I, I think I lost against Eric somewhere shortly after that, and then I, I won out after that. So this is one of those like where tiebreakers don't even help really because it was a it was a, cir- a round robin. Loss. Yeah, Cody beat. So we had three five and twos. Cody with his interesting ninjutsu deck. That was super um, cool. And then Cody beat Eric. Eric beat me, and I beat Cody. So right. Uh, but we ended up declaring Eric the winner. He has uh, you know overall match wins. His tiebreaker put him as slightly the highest. Correct. So we gave him just the. Uh, uh, the pure win. I decided not to argue semantics and and, and declare him the winner. So yeah. correct. Yeah. So you took second place, but yeah, it, yeah, it came down to opponent game wins, which yeah. is just like a really hard number to to see as a break. Um, so this was the friends and family. So this was kind of our our break uh, when we do these the St. Lotus right. There there's a lot of work with the streaming and everything. So uh, we decided we were going to do one kind of off stream and just you know have the draft you know have the draft to look at. Uh, but we did find it interesting enough that it was a lot more work than we thought because we didn't have someone pulling the cards the whole time. So it ended up being a lot slower and longer of a day Correct. than a normal St. Lotus just because we had to take this massive break in the middle. And that actually probably played a role in a lot, just the fatigue of oh, absolutely. like pulling the cards and going through that whole process and not having... Our, we didn't have our staff on hand, basically. Our staff was playing. <laughs> Correct, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have plans to make that better for next time. So yeah. I think there's like there's some good opportunities for this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's talk about your deck uh, and kind of talk about your plan going into it. Yeah. So I'll start up just pulling up the deck itself. Yeah. Uh, but I'd love to hear kind of like prior to the day starting, what kind of preparation did you do? What, what did your deck look like before you walked into the room? Did you know you were going to be in a Teferi deck? Um, so I had three, I, I had some general lists in mind. This was one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this one was saved. I actually had three Zerta lists. So I don't call this a Teferi deck. I call this a Zerta deck. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. Uh I had three Zerta lists. I had a red-black Zerta list. I had a red-green Zerta list. And I had this. Okay. Um, so I came in wanting to play Zerta the Dawn Waker and some form of Zerta combo, right? I I really wanted to end up, obviously, in the one seat because I wanted some Lotus with... Yeah. Um, um, I wanted some, basically, Bomberman-type shenanigans to go with Zerta. I think sure. that's very strong, uh, similar to what Erica did at one point with some switches. Uh, but this is the list I was actually highest on of the three. Okay. Uh, so digging into Zerta, I found a lot of interesting things, right? I was like, okay, so like hit over Mirror Shell Crab real quick. Um, sure, yeah. The, the obvious ones are, just like, to summarize before, right? right the so, obvious ones are the monolith. Yeah, yeah. To so, make infinite mana and then Goblin Cannon the, and the Wind Con. The, the key parts of the, the Wind Cons for the Zerta list aren't the hardest. that you have to fill it with all, you need functional things and you need them to all have activated abilities, right? right. So Planeswalkers are going to become very strong because they have activated abilities. Um, Mirror Shell Crab, for example, is Channel. Channel is an activated ability. Sure. Um, I discovered that, uh, do I have it in this list? I don't have it in this list, but in some of my red black, uh, I discovered that Unearth, of course, is an activated ability. Okay. So Unearth works, right? Interesting. So I started looking for like other types of activated ability that allow me to functionally use creatures in a different way, right? Sure. So I started thinking about cards like, um, uh, Deran- not Deranged Hermit, the Malevolent Hermit. Okay, yeah. Which lets you to sack and counter the spell, right? So I needed some elements uh, for the... So this is how, like, Mirror Shell Crab came to be, right? So it is... It's a fatty that I can cast if I need the end game, but it also is just going to serve as a nice little counter spell slash, you know... Uh, and it also got sighted out sometimes, which was fine, because sure. I, I, you need cards to sight out. Um, the only things I really... Lo- so the, the, I had a list. I sent it off to somebody else to kind of look at it and say, hey, what do you think? And they made some comments. They like, they're like, yeah, I think Mondrak's too cute. Mm-hmm. And I, but I stuck with it. Um, the only things I ended up really losing off of my list coming in. So this is pretty much what I came in with. Um, Brandon... Oh, so we've, we've left, yeah. before, before we jump to the actual draft sure. itself. Because obviously we're going to have to talk through kind of like positioning, where things went yeah. and all that stuff. Um, was there, for the, the plan going in, did you plan to have had this many planeswalkers? Like on each, yes, absolutely. This okay. was, every single one of these planeswalkers was on my initial list. Okay. 
Um, so I, the only, I think there was one other, I, I think I might've had Karn, uh, great creator in my, in my list as well. And this is always going to be a Thopter Sword deck as well? As yeah, yeah. So if, I, if I've got, I, not all my Urza lists have Thopter Sword, but in this list, because I had Enlightened Tutor, um, I, I obviously wanted Thopter Sword. Uh, the fact that after a balance, they can, you know, just totally. go off, right? Like you can balance and wipe a board and then just kind of go off, even without Urza. With after a balance, you can just with your mana start pulling shenanigans, right? Sure. So you can rebuild a board pretty quick. Um, so there was always going to be Thopter Sword. They're activated abilities. They provided me an, a, another reach. Um, uh, Eternal. The, so originally, this I before I got to this, the original thought was I was actually going to go mono. Like I'm, I'm a big lover of Ancient Tomb. I drafted Ancient Tomb early. I think it's massively underdrafted. I agree. Um, and I know I, I knew I wanted Ancient Tomb, and I knew I wanted Grim Monolith for some big mana stuff. Yep. So uh, my original plan was going to actually kind of be a mono white thing for a little bit, and okay. then uh, that's where the Eternal Wanderer came in. Like there were some goldfishes where I was able to turn to Eternal Wanderer. Right. Sure. Um, or That's at minimum, true. turn three it. So, Got it. Uh, I didn't... Yeah, I'll get to that later on the play. But yeah, so like it was always going to be on those Walker list. And then as I ended up with the artifacts, uh, you know, then it became an Urza list as well. And so... Cool. All right. Yeah, let's let's jump over to the draft and see actually mm -hmm. what happened. Obviously, like, things never go according to plan. That's yeah. why we enjoy this thing. Like, I'm sure you had Karn on your list pretty highly. Uh, as I said, it was there. Uh, it wasn't as my, you know, I've run a lot of Karn lists, so it wasn't a priority. But, you know, in a list like this, I, it would have been strong. Right. So, you know, it, losing it was not the end of the world there. I, I was going to actually try to float it a little bit later, probably into the fourth or fifth. Yeah. Um, but... So I, you know, I take, you know, the draft goes like pretty, pretty normal here at this point. Uh, I take Pearl. Um, it's and... weird to see Brandon kind of in this deck that both of those cards feel like they would fit very well in your deck. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I would have been fine with any of those, right? Like I was fine with any rock. Sure. At, at, you know, at this point, I ended up taking Pearl. I, I still, in general, especially in this deck, which has a little more color commitment, yep. prefer the colored mana over the over the uncolored. Though, um, you know, I, I, you know, I was fine with any of those. Mm -hmm. Uh, after Brandon takes the Crypt and Soul Ring, I, this is, I'm going to go ahead and just lock up to Fairy. That makes um, sense. I, normally, I would think I could float him around, but da, da, as soon as I take it, Dan exclaims, because that was Dan's next pick, right? So, uh, For what it's worth, that was also my next pick. Okay. So yeah, if, if Dan hadn't taken it, I would have. I right. think Teferi is very clearly a second round pick at this point. Um, you know, as soon as I take Monolith uh, with a third, uh, then uh, Brandon exclaims he knows what I'm doing, because you know, Monolith <laughs> that early is probably a cue you're doing Zerda. You don't want to yes. lose the Monolith. Um, Monolith's just a weird card. It's hard to judge where it's going to go. Um, do, do you think that, I mean, Zerda is fine with Basalt Monolith too, right? Like You, don't, you want both. You want both, you but want you don't both. need both. I, you want you. I think you really need both. Okay, fair yeah, enough. I think you really need both. Uh, I will say that. So, like, I, I came in with multiple plans. Seventy percent of my games were won by Zerda. Okay, you know, like Zerda combo was the majority of my games. Wow, um, in in some form. Uh, then Tomb, as in, I, I, you know, I take Tomb right around the spot all the time. Uh, I think Tomb, you know, just that ability, just like Crypt, right? Just that ability to go let Tomb mox three drop. And then like, certain two four drop is, is so powerful. Oh, sorry, we're having um, some technical issues here. A second, give me one second to try yeah. to fix that. But yeah, so I, I think Tomb's really powerful in this deck in particular, as it's going to allow me to do like a Mondrak or an Urza, you know, really quick, uh, or a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, you know, that just gives you those really strong, powerful options. Uh, and it, it was it was good all day long, of course. Got it. And we're almost there. We are back. Sorry right. about that. And, and then the next one, you know, here is Ballista, which is, you know, a key piece for me. Um, and it is, Ballista's really hard to judge where it's going to go, right? Ballista sure. can be a little bit later, but right right here, I have to take it here because one, I know Brandon, um, and Brandon is a drafter. He's already got Vault. So Brandon and I think a lot alike. We're often mm -hmm. looking for high synergy decks. Um, we often end up counter drafting off. We talk draft a lot. He's already got. Crypt and or uh, Crypt and Soaring and Tinker and, right. and Tinker. So this is the type of spell he's going to want. Uh, Eric's got Dragavan and Karn, yep. so he could very easily and Lotus. He could very easily end up in some kind of Bomberman thing, right? So I have to take Ballista here because I don't know whatever they're up to necessarily, but it's it, it is one that's so hard to predict where it's going to go because it's reliably probably the best infinite mana win. In, in a lot of ways. Totally. That makes sense. Um, you're also, are, are we are we going right at this point, right? So have yeah. you seen that green is getting drafted there? 
I or, have. We are going right. So okay. So you've seen the crop rotation of the misty rainforest. Are we going right? Uh, let me scroll up a minute and find out. Um, so one, two, three, four. Yeah, we're going to the right. At this okay. Point. So you saw two green. Yeah. So so it's a pretty good chance that somebody might try to pull out the elk a, to shot right, special a channel, right. and do a channel duck of right. some kind. Right. So so Ballista, I feel, has got to go there. Right. Uh, Kevin's throwing wild cards in at this point, right? Like, you know, to grabbing the bridge there, for example, yeah. grabbing the breach early. Um, you know, I think his deck ends up being pretty decent. He was a real challenge for me later on, but like... He stumped me into. <laughs> he's like, he, you know, for, for someone that does, for a group of players that does more drafts, yeah. he's messing our algorithm up, which is its sure. own, oh, its it's own power move in a way, right? Like, you know, he's messing our algorithm up. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, and he, he, we talked about this with him already, but he, he did that on purpose, right? He purposely right. said, I'm not going to go for the fetch land disruption that a lot of red decks do. Instead, I'm going to grab the cards that other decks are going to want in order to throw them off their game and to just guarantee that I get the cards that I need for my deck. Right. Uh, Academy was obviously actually my next pick on the ballista, uh, my next pick after the ballista. I sure. was hoping another one, uh, but I, you know, not surprised I didn't get it. I'm shocked that you chose to take Urza Lord High Artificer because that's that way out of your wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, no. 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 So if, if you, if there's a, at this point, uh, me and Urza have become a meme. I've done 18 VRDs between lot. online and face to face, and I've drafted Urza in nine of those. Uh, <laughs> How many of and, those? And that, that, that doesn't include modern. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure at this sure. point. So also, uh, Urza was only legal in like ten of them. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. And, no, no, because uh, my first VRD, I drafted Urza. Oh really? Okay. VRD two right after Modern Math nice. <laughs> gave up. Like uh, my very first one. He was actually not great in that deck, uh, but. All right, he didn't do well for me. Yeah, that was your Narset and Urza in like the first yeah, they, two rounds. Yeah, no Narset Karn with my Narset Karn Lotus yeah. Lotus Karn Narset. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like a lot of these picks in like Enlightened Tutor, right? Again, I know this is something I don't know what color Brandon's going to end up in, but this is something here. Eric uh, took the Stoneforge. Stoneforge was in my initial list, so that was the other big thing. I had a I didn't have. I just had Stoneforge Cauldra. I had Batter Skull in the board, okay. but I wasn't going to uh, going to main deck both. Um, yeah, I'm sure that depends on kind of like how aggressive the field is. Right. right. But the, so like Heliod was a replacement for the Stoneforge. So okay. I'm, I'm scrambling to uh, do that. I lost later to Brandon a Retrofitter Foundry. Oh, um, sure. So that's where Goblin Cannon comes in. Yeah. Uh, Goblin Cannon was not on my initial list, uh, which Goblin Cannon actually ended up being better for me because Retrofitter doesn't win that turn. Okay. Um, Goblin, I won a lot of games through Goblin Cannon. That like, makes sense. like just winning that turn. So. Um, yeah, how how common is Goblin Cannon as a win con? Let's say uh, I mean, four out of eighty, so not not particularly. The Zertalists, yeah. <laughs> Eric. Tra- yeah, right. no. As we scroll down, you yeah. say exactly yeah. it falls into the exact same camp. Yeah, exactly. So anytime you're making oh, infinite memory, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Emory ended up on my board, for example. Right. I, if, if I figured it, I was going to bring it in, I didn't want to be milling my stuff. But if someone's running a lot of artifact removal. Uh, or I could rebuy like a ballista against the counterspell deck, so I brought it in against ca- decks with counterspells. Totally. So it looks like that's where it always goes, right? It always right. goes in these Zerta lists. Yeah. So I mean, it, it gets played a lot in other lists too, but uh, it sure. doesn't have to be Zerta. But uh, but the idea was I don't want to be milling my stuff main deck, so I don't really need it main deck. But that against sense. decks that are going to get rid of my stuff, I can you know like uh, so one of my, my final win like I had an interesting problem by. Uh, I got Goblin Cannon. I lost Goblin Cannon against um, Brandon in Game Three in, in this chess match. Like it went I, to I had, graveyard? Yeah, I got had it. Infinite Mana. It got exiled, so I don't remember exactly what. But I, I lost it. I didn't have a way to get it back, and I had Infinite Mana, so okay. I'm go, I have to go. For, I'm going for the win. But the problem is, is when I have Infinite Mana and Urza, I can get to a win, but I can't win with Ballista. I need something in my deck that I can win oh, with. Sure. Because Ballista is cash for free, right? Yes. So I had to do these shenanigans where, like, I was, like, casting cards from my deck and then trying to draw cards and trying to draw into Ballista. And I ended up not being able to do it, and I had to, like, pass the turn and hope he didn't. I, I managed most of his board enough that yeah. it didn't matter. But I had to, like, bounce the stuff, a bunch of stuff, pass the turn, and, and try to win. Every- and I only had, like, three cards left in my deck. So I cast, like, yeah. everything in my deck at this point. So presumably you, like, had hit the Ballista off of the Urza? Is that what happened? Yeah, because he had gotten rid of the cannon. I, I wanted to be hitting cannon off of the Urza. Yeah. Right. Um, but, like, he had gotten... He had countered the cannon with something. I don't remember what. Sure. And yeah. I, I didn't have a way to get it back. Yeah, um, interesting. You, you don't have any recursion. Uh, I had Academy Runes. 
Um, but that only goes to the top. Yeah, which is fine. Uh, oh, but, right, yeah, it should be fine, yeah. I mean, as long as I can draw it. I just don't use Urza then, and I just draw it, right? And then make the infinite mana. Right, but you need to have it in play in right. order to use it with Urza. Um, or have not made a land drop, right? Like, right. You, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so the rest of this looks like fairly standard at this point. Let's see if there's anything that jumps out. Um, the the Karn going in 16, that feels like a little early for Karn. Do you think that's right, or is that where it should go? I mean, he's it's somewhere in there. I mean, he's a really good card. Uh, there was, a couple again, a couple decks that might want it. Um, you know, at, at that point, there's not a lot of stuff. So I'm just, I, I'm just grabbing my power cards. I'm not right. super worried about a lot of stuff at that point, right? Like, um... So I'm grabbing cards that I know at least get drafted. Totally, the cop red grabbing that there. Yeah, just cop make red. Sure. Yeah, just make sure I, you know, I want it for for that. Um, How did what is this uh, thought not seer doing? Did I even draft thought not seer? Apparently, let's let's verify it here. But no, that's 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 brand new. Oh, we were okay. We got we got pulled over. I was okay. like, that seems very strange. Yes, some, something's going on there. Okay, yeah, it's like I didn't draft on us here. <laughs> I, I know we ran into that issue before right. as well. Uh, Heliod was like, because I'd lost Stoneforge package, so I said, well, I got uh, Walking Ballista, so I might as well. Um, uh, H23. Three. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. This, is, this happened during there. Somebody copy and pasted something right. and ended up breaking everything. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Right. Um, so the Mondrak came up in a couple games. So the Mondrak was interesting. I won a couple games by just. Um, like one of the games against Kevin, I won without comboing simply because I was able to make two token every Thopter Foundry with just mana, no infinite, just make two tokens sure. and then have enough blockers to deal with stuff, right? So sense. I was just, you know, grinding out. Um, I'm sure the life gain didn't hurt either. Yeah, the life gain, of course, helped. Uh, I, you know, I did get the, the, the Karn and the Urza getting two, um, you know, two uh, Karn Strucks. Yeah, it's super nice. Uh, you know, a couple games I got two uh, guys off of Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim. Um, Let's talk about this Artificer class because this is a card that doesn't get drafted very much. Yeah, it's it, it got, came out last year. It came out uh, at, during Baldur's Gate in one of the Commander decks. I was pretty high on it. I tried it here. I won't say it was amazing, but I definitely was not bad. Right. So sure. uh, I mean, the fact is, is that. It, um, it, the mana did matter a couple times, right? The mana reduction for the first spell. Right. And then the, what it typically got me to was it, you know, I didn't often go past the second one, but it was just like get a free artifact, you know? And even if that was just a land, it sure. was just smoothing me out, giving me, you know, sometimes a couple games that gave me Goblin Cannon. Um, there was some funny games where I did get to the ultimate, and it was pretty uh, interesting, right? Like, uh, just multiple Basalt Monoliths, you know, just like sure. lots and lots of mana. Um, you and know, Notably, it triggers on your end step, so that's yeah. definitely like, yeah. it, it can go, it can make a blocker for you. Drawing extra cards off Astrolabe. Sure. Um, you know, extra Karn tokens. So, you know, I did have turns with the mana um, that it was better when I had Tolarian Academy. Mm -hmm. Right, because then I was able to activate it more easily. Um, so yeah, I, I've got it actually again right now in Discord twenty. Mm -hmm. um, I'm two and one currently. Um, I don't know if I've cast it yet, but it's in there again. So I'm giving it another go. I said I don't. I don't think it's been amazing, but I think it's a pretty good role player in these kind of Urza, um, Urza artifacty hybrid lists. That, sure. You know. So in, in uh, turn 26 and 27 here with the Thought Monitor and Mystic Forge, mm -hmm. are those cards you would have wanted in your deck or do you not have the density for them? Because like, um, you took both artifact lands, which is usually a sign that, that the affinity creatures are going to be good. Yeah. Uh, I The artifact lands were there to pump um, you know, uh, Urza tokens mostly. Totally. Um, Thought Monitor, I didn't have on my list, but I, I definitely... Oh, you can't play it. I'm really dumb. It doesn't have uh, an activated ability. Yeah, so there we go. That, that, that's why. That makes sense. And, and that was part of the math of the Zerta deck. Like, I yeah. had to go through There's a lot of cards that I might want that this I one. can't. This one does. Yes. Um, but I don't actually think I have enough artifact density to make this worthwhile. I did think long and hard about this. Sure. Um, but I'm not that dense in the colorless. So he's using it because it allows you to cast the colorless lands, right? So he's using it to cast uh, not just the artifacts, but to cast the Eldrazi. Yeah, real um, Smash Smasher and all that. Right. So I don't have the density to make it worthwhile, especially for a four drop. You, you have to be really dense or in the Eldrazi deck to make Mystic Forge work. I think Mystic Forge is best in the Eldrazi deck. Okay. Um, oh, you know, because, you know, the, the really dense just artifact deck where it's also good in is also easily to hate out. 
you know, like I honestly wasn't overly afraid of artifact hate with this list. And that's why I like these Urza lists is that like this, because yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm a Planeswalker list, I'm a Zerta list. And when I cast my artifacts, I'm often going to just win that turn. So that makes sense. I'm not super afraid of like the big artifact sweepers. I'm not, if I know you have them. I'm just not going to lay everything down on the table. I don't need to lay everything down on the table. Right. Energy flux right. doesn't matter if you win the turn you cast your Right, artifacts. exactly. Yeah, so no, I, I was the same way with mine. Like a, that's exactly where my list was too. Yeah. Uh, so Inventor's Fair is, is a card that often gets drafted with, uh, with, um, sorry, the one we were just talking about, with Mystic Forge. Right. Colored Mana would have been good. I felt uh, Academy uh, Ruins was better for me for, sure. the, for the buyback on uh, key pieces, right? Like losing, you know, getting your, uh, you know, uh, Walking Ballista countered sucks, yes. uh, being able to buy it back. So it's it's a matter of I have blue, 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 white, white, white. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I I cited out Heliod a lot. It it, it was just one of those concessions because I wanted the Stoneforge, and mm -hmm. but I was like, hey, well, Heliod seems to make sense here. It did do me well against uh, Kevin, so I mean, it was good. I don't regret drafting it at all. I think you won against me with it as well. Yeah. Uh, no, you beat me in two. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I came close to winning against you, but like, yeah. you you did stuff. <laughs> I, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. How is this new to fairy the temporal pilgrim? I know you're high on him. I, I've drafted this is I've drafted him twice. Uh, and he's been good. Um, I'm not sure he's great. I've just drafted him again. I think, or I am drafting him again coming up here today, probably. Um, ooh, Spoilers, yeah. Um, for a modern, though. Uh, but no, I think he's just got really good value. The the fact that he can draw you a card, the fact that just drawing grows him. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, after this draft, we'll probably make. I'll probably make my decision if he's actually worth it or not. Yeah. This the tokens are really good though, right? Like they're they're two two vigilance and they get bigger. Um. So I think the tokens are really good. The I, mean, I don't even know. What's the ultimate? It's so big. The target opponent. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Chooses a permanent. They control one turn of the hand and they shuffle each non land. Right? That's a pretty good ultimate. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> um. Yeah. If you're getting there, you're getting there. But uh, it feels kind of similar to Liliana. The, right. uh, the last hopes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the so, so the good one. The times I've casted, it's been solid. Um, I, you know, I'm still heavily experimenting with it. I still think it's you know got a lot of potential, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Five sure is a heck of a lot to me. Right. But. I mean, else like the I mean the the problem is I just I think at this point I'm just wondering if just like if it wasn't for the draw card. Yeah. Right. Then like I just want Elspeth Knight Aaron. Totally. But the 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 flexibility of I can just draw a card is is pretty. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, for me, the the card that I see with this that I'm just like, why are you not? Is is Tezzeret. like the old Tezzeret feels like it's a. Obviously, it goes better in the time vault decks and things like that. But just uh, uh, having the toolboxy nature of Tezzeret. that might have been better here. Yeah, yeah actually, that's straight up. I actually did, didn't even just think of that. I mean, that's uh, that would have been pretty good here to pull up a combo piece. Sure. Um, uh, Lord of the Third Path. The Third Path was really good. Yeah. Uh, it also would have, it would be really good in a deck like yours, except you didn't have white. Like if you've got, it's really good with um, um, Narset. Yes. And with you know, so ew, you target opponent to show a card. Lauren's but, real good with Narset on play. Yeah. yeah. Um, or whole breacher, you know. So Lauren was really good. Um, I cited it out against a lot of the decks because I didn't need it, but that's mm -hmm. fine. Again, you know, it, it gave me the value. Um, Mirage Mirror was a fun one to see go, particularly because I think Sam could have used it in her deck. I know she didn't want it, but it is a great combo with Dark Depths. It was um, for bringing it against Time Vault. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so dirty. It was to bring it against Time Vault and, and, and other things too, right? Like there was some other stuff that I could bring it against. But uh, yeah, the main idea was bringing it in against Vault or bringing it in against uh, some of these other decks that are doing some crazy stuff. So, so, so is the play pattern there like... Assuming they have the time vault and the combo online, there's no way that you can win through this unless they're right. sloppy, right? But it's it's if they play the time vault first yeah. and then don't have the piece yet. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, no, that, that's pretty sweet. Um, I, I yeah, I just, it's also pretty good actually against an opponent's dark depths. Now that you think yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that it, it could be. I mean, or could copy Tolarian Academy, you know. Uh, sure. You know, so. Um, so yeah, it was fun out of the board. If you um, copy a planeswalker, it just dies immediately, right? Because has no loyalty. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so it's, I don't know. This is one of those cards that feels like it's it's too busted to not have combos everywhere, but it's just hard to hard to find where they yeah. are. Uh, Aura of Silence was amazing yes. against Brandon in particular. Um, um, you're, so Aura of Silence, of course, just bonkers out of the, out of this world. I think that uh, Eric is more of a fan of Abolish, but mm -hmm. the, those are both like top tier cards. Yeah, Oriac Salvagers is one that. Uh, 
is one that you often see in combo decks. Yours is definitely not that. It's, right. it's more of a value uh, target. It's also a recursion for if you do happen to. It, it it's a hundred percent. It it came back. In, it came in with Emery. It, 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 the deck was going to be doing a, lo a lot of things against me. Sure. It was a way to get things back. Do you have a way to filter from colorless mana to colored mana? One Arkham Masterlet. Okay. Just a single time as yeah, well. Yeah, single time. Well, like, or you have the untaps, right? You have. Do you have untappers or no? No. No. Okay. Yeah. So a single time. So I, I don't think I actually cited an untappers. The idea was just another way to bring in something for recursion. Okay. Uh, and I, it might have been possible. I was thinking about LED at that point, but I don't remember if it had gone or not. I think LED had already gone, right? Because um, I wanted LED. And taking it away from somebody also just didn't hurt me. I had, I had enough sure. slots. Tabernacle was strictly, I didn't want to face it. It was oh, like, really? Okay. Yeah, well, it was late. It was like 46. Sure, yeah. And sometimes it goes there. That's where it typically goes. And someone's oh. like, oh, look, there's a token deck. I'm going to... So I was like, no, no. you. I'm not dealing with that, right? Well, Sam, <laughs> Sam did have the rotation. Like, right. She, she had the full there. Yeah, so I was just like, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to deal with Tabernacle, so I'm just taking that garbage. Um, so your deck seems like it came pretty close to kind of what you had written down. Let's mm -hmm. jump over to your deck list again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what things do you regret or like what 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 learnings do you have from this obviously like you can never account for brandon being brandon or kevin right. sniping your picks early um but what things are if you if you were going to draft this deck again what would you change in priority orders things like that not not nothing much really really yeah you know, i mean i think my priority order is pretty good um you know i don't um you know i mean some of the stuff like in a lot of drafts you probably i probably still could have got um uh, Stoneforge, but you know we've talked before that Stoneforge has definitely been on the rise. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and knowing this crowd, I wasn't going to get that. You know, probably get it. You know, I knew I was going to lose something in coming into this. I had too many good cards. Yeah. Um, well, and even even if it's like kind of the thing that happened in literally like round three or whatever it was, yeah. right? Losing out on the saga, right. for instance, or like uh, I'm sure Academy would have been pretty solid. In yeah, yeah, Academy was definitely the the one that. I was like smarting the most from, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there was that much that I would really change in the order. I mean, I, you know, some of the, the, the questions like I could, I probably floated the models a little longer maybe, but again, with a card like that and with the way that the way the draft was looking, mm -hmm. you just don't know. I mean, like, um, you know, Brandon's already got the, you know, the two big colorless producers. Is he going to just go all in on that and just take it? Um, uh, the early stuff, one one thing that I noticed in your list is you don't have a ton of real hateful sideboard cards, right? You have you have a few. You have like Aura of Silence, you have mm -hmm. Cop Red, mm -hmm. uh, Cathar Commando, kind of. But like a lot of these cards are a lot more value creatures that have some hate along with them. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you did you feel like more silver bullets would have been helpful, or do you think that like having the uh, just I'm gonna swap out this card like the, swap out my three for a seven. I think that's what you wanted. I think for this list, swap out three for a seven is what okay. I want, right? Because I, I, I want the engine. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose a lot of value. Um, so, you know, I mean, cop red is the closest I think I have to just a pure like you know screw you silver bullet. Hmm, silence um, is pretty. Or of silence is pretty strong. Right, right. Well. But yeah. but even then, it, it is in its own way a you know because you can stack it to destroy. So. You know, the, the first half is the Silver Bullet. The second half is just Cathar Commando. So, right, yeah, yeah. you know, um, you know, Apostles. There wasn't a lot of Graveyard Hate, so I didn't need it. Obviously, I could have, you know, taken more Graveyard Hate. But, mm -hmm. like, there wasn't a lot that you really needed it against. Yeah, nobody was doing the Graveyard thing. Yeah, no one was really. I mean, so uh, Kevin had, you know, he had the, the um, Underworld Dreams or Underworld Breach. Breach. Yeah. So I didn't know exactly. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have some Graveyard just in case. Sure. You know, have a little something. Um, Dovin was really good against a lot of things. So I was pretty well between Dovin and Aura and Cathar. Mm -hmm. Like I had a really good package to bring in against, um, you know, the artifact decks. Um, this laid on arms is a card that I, I don't see very often. Obviously it, it's even new. 46, yeah. right? It's like not, I think Cody mentioned this to me. I didn't even know this card existed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's brand new. Um, you know, I, it, did, did it pl get played? Yeah, I brought it in. Okay. I brought it in because so I wanted some more removal. I don't remember against what, but, you know, I needed another piece of removal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was taking something out that I didn't really need, like a Lauren. So it's like, you know, it was like a matchup that, like, I, it's a creature deck mostly. I need a piece of removal. I don't need Lauren. Right. Yeah. So Lauren comes out, removal comes in. It probably know? could have been easily, a, like, an Oblivion Ring. And it would yeah. Be the same it, thing. Yeah. It could have been anything. But, it, you know, it was, it's one manner, one manner removal. So. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really weird card, and I don't know how to evaluate it. But I mean, and here, I mean, by the you know, I think most of the time, I'm I'm probably going to be okay with it. Uh, 
you know, with the mana value question, uh, I had four four planes plus hollowed. Um, so, you know, five planes is looking at, and tundra, so six planes. Yep. So I'm probably going to be okay getting most of the creatures I want, um, you know, three and unders. So Sure. So for the deck, for the, for the draft overall, which uh, which decks really stood out to you as like, the these are the things that kind of broke the draft. Were there any, or do you think it was a pretty fair field overall? Um, Eric's deck was really sick. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was the fair, I thought this was fail, field was fair, right? I thought this fa- field was fair magic mm-hmm. uh, for the most part. Uh, I mean, I think your deck was probably the, the most unfair. Right? I mean, by a lot. By, by a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and Although when Cody was beating me down with that four drop ninja, I, I felt pretty unfair on the other side. <laughs> yeah, so I think your deck was the most unfair, and it was the deck I struggled with the most. I, I think a deck like this is very well set up against fair magic. Okay. Um, you know, like Teferi and Balance is just a combo that that is the deck I, I had as my first hope to be able to draft, but I ended up in the ancestral seat, which is really right. sad for me. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, didn't, I think I only got to cast balance once, and it was against you, and I lost that game. Yeah, it, <laughs> but it was it was, a, it was a hail mary true. balance. It didn't, you know. Totally. It, it, I was getting rid of your hand, and then you immediately drew ancestral. Yep, pretty, pretty good when that <laughs> yeah. happens. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. I think balance is safely below first round pick. So yeah, um, no, but but the Teferi balance deck, I had a very different take on it. Obviously, more combo oriented. Right. But that those two cards in combination just feel like insane to me. Yeah. I mean, so against fair decks, like I had, you know, mirror show crab can keep a little honest on, on the, on the counter counter game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got balance to reset a game. I've got swords and prismatic to, um, you know, to wipe some creatures. I did use ballistas removal a couple times, just like, Hey, I'm just going to totally. need to, you know, remove this, this issue. And then just combo win. As I said, most of my wins ended up being combo. Um, I probably enlightened actually for a land on curve more than anything else. Oh, for an artifact land. Yeah, yeah of course. For an artifact land. I probably just That's enlightened. Funny. I probably just used it as like I'm guaranteeing a land draw yep. more than anything else. But you know, there were other times where I was, you know, getting the piece I needed. It was either guaranteeing a land draw or getting a pearl or an opal. Like it was like I, I, I did it for mana more than anything. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, did Ottawara actually get used? I did not. I have used it before. Like I have one game simply because of Ottawara, right? Like it yeah. was a blight steal. Uh, you know. That's pretty good. Uh, but it did not. Um, you know, so yeah, those lands are always interesting. I, I don't think I really end up ever using their ability much. Lands are too valuable. And I typically run a very... Mi- this is actually... I will say this is one of my most... I, I'm switching out and trying a less miser's land count. Okay. With moxes, I often end up running a very misery land count. Same. And so I'm now going like 15 or 16 a little more and trying not to do the 14s and the 13s. Yeah, I think I often um, fall to like 12. Sometimes. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, you know, like this is probably the deck that Ottawa would have been most likely to be used in. Sure. Because I wasn't, you know, I ha- was, wasn't was going to have the lands. A lot of my lists, I have a miser's land count and I end up, you know, I just need the land. I can't. Yeah, I have Ottawa, but like. Okay, cool. I need a land. I'm not going to hold it for some eventual threat, totally. you know, when I've got a curve out here, you know, or try to. That makes sense. Uh, Eternal Wanderer didn't, I didn't really get a test. Like, the idea of it with Monolith and all that stuff seems really good. Uh, I think it was powerful. I, I, I only cast it once, and I was already winning that game at that point. Right. So it was pretty irrelevant. Um, yeah, is this card? Or I cast it twice, I think. Right. This is just a Hagen special, it looks like, so... I mean, it's really, really powerful, yeah. um, you know, and it can do a lot of, it can wipe a board, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it can act as a secondary balance, and it can do that off this drop. I've got big enough mana. As I said, remember, originally my list had um, Academy in it right. as well. So I've got big enough mana that I'm able to cast it pretty early. Um, it can, there are some nice little synergies like uh, blinking your Urza with it. Oh, okay, sure. Um, to, to get more constructs. Um or blinking even just naturally to draw another card. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't think it's bad. I you know I do think there's an interesting like mono white grim monolith deck, like big mana deck mm-hmm. out there um, that's gonna drop this really quick. For for me, I want to see it in the um, whatever the sneak attack creature is that drops uh, planeswalkers. It's right. very strong right, with right. that. Cool. So um, any closing thoughts before we uh, before we wrap this thing up? No, uh, as I said, my losses were to Eric and his uh, initiative shenanigans and then to you, which was, you know, and then while Eric's deck is essentially a fair deck, initiative is an unfair mechanic. So, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, so those uh, those work there. Uh, my, my next closest match was probably Kevin, um, and that was just like, I had a game against him, game three, where... I had combo in hand, but I had to deal with an Eidolon and win through an Eidolon, and I was only at like 
three or four life or something. And <laughs> that's pretty fun. Yeah, but I, I took about ten minutes and had finally figured out like the order play, and it involved like casting this ballista for hire. What, what is the idol on? Of called? Great Rebel. Great, of the Great Rebel. Of the Great Rebel, yeah. yeah there we go. Uh, it involved casting the ballista for like six or something and then killing the idol on first and sure. then pumping the ballista after. <laughs> and it was a, it was pretty complex. I was doing a whole lot of algebra. And, <laughs> <laughs> and as a sociologist, that's a little different. Yeah, because yeah. he was only at like three or something too. So it didn't take much, but I had to like, you know, I had to figure out a way to deal with it and it was tough. Um, that's pretty fun. Cool. So. Well, yeah, thanks. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to April 1st. Uh, you're going to be on commentary. I'm going right? to be on commentary, yeah. I'm going to yeah. be, be back in the booth. Mm-hmm. Um, you so, and Reptar? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to have Reptar zooming in, and it's going to be fun. We're going to talk some magic. We got some newcomers, some new blood. Uh, mm-hmm. That's going to be interesting. A couple of new blood and a couple of returners. Max took Max Schroeder coming back. He took second last time mm-hmm. with Reanimator. So in his first draft ever. In his first draft. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Kyle Vance, who's uh, finished well, but not won one yet. Uh, but you know, but has he's to be... like, go close to every RCQ. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he was, I think, took, I think he took third place in the RCQ I judged. Right. He's just like right on the cusp of making the Pro Tour, honestly. Yeah, yeah. so he's a really good player. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting, be interesting. Brandon is playing. Um, you know, he commentated the, the last one. Brandon is always... Uh, We'll see where he's at, right? <laughs> Sam's going to draft some thought seasons. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how much sleep Brandon gets and how much that uh, influences uh, his draft, you know. Yeah, I, I'm sure he's put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Awesome. And, yeah, we'll see you, you on the first. Yep.